So let me now rephrase our condition for invertibility of quantum channels and um, put it in a context of quantum error correction. So now we have a quantum system, a precious quantum system, and that we want to protect against uh, hostile environment. The system interacts with the environment and the environment is inducing a completely positive map that we want to invert. We want to recover the original state of the quantum system. Can we do that? So here, this condition for invertibility comes into play. Well, let's start with a generic scheme for <coughs> quantum error correction. Recall that um, usually we are given a, a certain number of qubits in some unknown quantum state. So we have k qubits in some state psi. And the first thing we do, we encode k qubits into a larger number of qubits, say n qubits. So we do this by <coughs> taking the original k qubits and bringing n minus k qubits in some fixed quantum state, say all in zero. And then we perform encoding unitary operation. The kind of intuition you can have about uh, the role of the encoding is that we want to spread the quantum state, spread the original quantum state over many qubits. Why? Well, if error happens on one qubit and we have our quantum state spread over many qubits, then perhaps it's not the end of the story, right? So perhaps something can be done <coughs> and quantum state can be recovered. Mathematically, let me just move to this diagram now, you can think about encoding as isometric embedding. So we take the original Hilbert space associated with, uh, with uh, the k qubits and we drop it, that's isometric embedding, into a larger Hilbert space associated with n qubits. So the original Hilbert space of k qubit becomes a, the code subspace within this larger Hilbert space. Now, the reason why we want this to be a subspace in a much larger Hilbert space is because we want to allow for a possibility that errors may just simply take this code subspace and move it to some corners of this larger Hilbert space. So, and if that happens and, and those error subspaces are mutually orthogonal, we already know that we can reverse the whole process and reset the error subspace back to the code space. But we'll come to this in a moment. So on this diagram we are here. We are at the stage where we encoded um, our k qubits into n qubits and then n qubits are exposed to decoherence, to interaction with the environment. So that would introduce some errors and in general that would be a, a certain completely positive map that will change the state of the qubit. The question is, can we invert this map? Now we know that in some cases we can. So when? Well, here is the condition. We look at the Krauss representation of this map. We now call Krauss operators quantum errors. We take any set of Krauss operators that specifies uh, this particular map. And uh, if uh, the Krauss operators in this set satisfy this condition, then uh, we can invert the map and we call the errors or the Krauss operators uh, correctable. So you look at this condition, it's deja vu experience perhaps, uh, except this operator P here. The P is a projector on the code space. So now the map takes the code space and maps it into some subspaces in within this sort of larger Hilbert space of n qubits. So this uh, P, when restricted to the code space, is the identity operator, so you recover the, the previous condition. Now, of course, this condition tells us more. It says that there is a special set of Krauss operators um, which allows us to view this map as a mixture of isometries. In fact, in this case, those isometries will be induced by unitary operations on the, on the, on the big Hilbert space associated with um, n qubits. So each isometry will be generated by a unitary operation on n qubits. But when it is confined, if you confine your input states to the subspace C, that's uh, isometry, right? So um, your isometry is then constructed as a projector on the code space, some unitary on 
n qubits. And, the, and we already know that this condition tells us that <coughs> those unitaries, when confined to the input states from the code space, will be mutually orthogonal. So they will generate mutually orthogonal error subspaces. And that's great. And we already understand that this structure allows us to go back to the code space, to invert the whole operation, simply because partition into mutually orthogonal subspaces means that we can construct the measurement, the error syndrome measurement. And once we perform this measurement, we identify where our state is, in which particular error subspace it resides. And uh, we just apply a unitary that undoes the error. So we reverse <coughs> those uh, unitaries and reset the whole thing into the code space. So that's, uh, of course, uh, one way of thinking about it. You can also combine the error syndrome measurement with uh, recovery operation into one big unitary operation. What you do is, <coughs> effectively, you just construct a, a certain completely positive map, and you can always do it by adding few auxiliary qubits and performing a big unitary operation that combines the identification of the relevant error subspace with resetting the subspace to the code space. So we can do the error recovery that's a fixed unitary operation on the, on the system plus uh, of n qubits plus some auxiliary qubits, and that will just recover the original state. So this condition then tells you which quantum errors, which are induced by the environment, are correctable. So if you are given a set of errors, and uh, if you want to design a code that corrects for this set of errors, then the code is a subspace in this higher dimensional Hilbert space, and uh, this code corrects for the set of errors if the errors and the projector satisfy this condition here. And the next step is to look at uh, special errors, and those special errors will be the Pauli errors, so the product of Pauli operators, a tensor product of Pauli operators. So that will be a tensor products like bit flips and phase flip errors. Um, as it happens, those uh, Pauli operators on n qubits will form a very convenient basis to analyze any error whatsoever. So we will now study errors which are associated with Pauli operators. So effectively, we are going to reduce everything into bit flip errors and phase flip errors.